This is Better System Trader, episode 15. Welcome to Better System Trader, the podcast to help systematic traders of all levels improve their trading. We'll give you loads of expert tips and practical advice on system design and validation, money management, trading psychology, and many other topics. Whether you're just starting out or a savvy systematic trader, we're here to help you improve your trading and find more success. This is Better System Trader with your host, Andrew Swanscott. Welcome to the Better System Trader Podcast. This is episode 15 and I'm your host, Andrew Swanscott. This week we're talking with Stuart McPhee. He's been trading for nearly 20 years. He's an author, trading coach, licensed advisor and regular speaker at major trading events all around the world. Stuart regularly appears on the TV show Your Money, Your Call on Sky Business and also appears on Channel News Asia as a commentator on the foreign exchange markets. In this episode, Stuart discusses the counterintuitive side to trading, the common mistakes traders make, the single biggest factor to trading success and tips to improving our trading discipline. He's also got some great trading analogies for us, so listen out for those. Anyway, here he is. Hope you enjoy it. Stuart, thanks for joining us today. Oh, no problems. Could you please start by giving us a bit of background into how you got into trading and what you're doing now? Yeah, it was probably like a a lot of people um, just had some money, had some savings and wanted to do something with it. And um, I remember going to a, a financial planner or something along those lines and they said, oh, you know, you're young enough and you can certainly, you know, wear some risk. You should be buying some shares. And I'm going, okay, um, if that's what you think I should do, I'll, I'll do that. So that was sort of our first foray, but it wasn't until uh, a few years later, and we certainly, my wife and I were doing some things with shares, but it wasn't until probably oh, maybe two or three years later that we saw an advertisement that definitely took my interest uh, because we'd been involved in the market a little bit and following companies and following shares and learning about dividends and what they were and how they impacted price and all these sort of little bits and pieces you pick up along the way. And we saw this advertisement uh, for a seminar. It was about trading as it turned out. And absolutely, I had to go along. I wanted to uh, find out what this was all about. They were talking about all this money you could make and it really, of course, you know, took my interest. So off we went along. It was probably a Saturday morning for memory and went along to this uh, hotel seminar room and listened to this guy. And he had charts up there. And it's sort of really the first time I'd looked at serious charts, um, you know, really quite good looking charts and lines all over the place and lots of numbers and, you know, the all that sort of stuff, more than I'd probably seen in the newspaper, for example. And it looked just all very professional and very well presented. And here was this idea of, uh, you know, way you, you do it a lot more active and you do this and you do this analysis and and um, and I was following all the numbers and it made all a lot of sense. And, and it just really, really took my interest. Um, absolutely. And I realised I could probably be doing a little bit more or taking it a little bit more seriously and a little bit more actively. And I've, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I think it was exciting. It was like uh, an exciting thing to be a little bit more active. So uh, we're probably talking about ni- 1999 now, which seems a long time ago and it probably is. But in my journey, it was only really just the beginning of picking up bits and pieces and and what have you. Now, the rest is history and, um, you know, a lot has happened since that time and it wasn't really until 2000, probably more so 2001. They were the really defining years for me, though, two years. Um, very, very defining. A lot of things happened. I lost a ridiculous amount of money, um, but I had made some throughout 99. Um, so I actually saw it was possible. And I think that's probably an obstacle that a lot of people have is they still some people probably still are a little sceptical and really don't believe that you can actually make money consistently from it. Um, so that was an obstacle and that was an obstacle I was able to pass and get over because I actually had made some money. I just gave it all back and some and a lot more. Um, so, But I'd seen it was possible. So I thought I just really need to do this a little bit better and you know, think about risk a little bit more and, and what have you. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're now well over 10 years beyond that point where every year I still, you know, I continue to learn more and I know more now than I did 12 months ago. And sometimes you think, what more am I going to learn? But you just happen to learn it, um, even though you really don't see how to do that. But um, uh, what am I doing now? Um, you know, I have my blog where I just sort of do some analysis and post some articles. Uh, I get invited to speak at events all around the world, and uh, which is great because if I'm not traveling, I'm 
sitting in my home office, um, which uh, you know is good at, good at times, but every now and again you do need to get out. So I do enjoy that part of it. I appear on television regularly just to talk about the market. In fact, I was on television this morning, um, uh, <laughs> excuse me, throughout uh, Asia. And um, yeah, so those sort of things keep me interested. They, they engage me because if I'm not talking to someone like yourself or I'm not talking to someone, you know, running a breakfast show in Singapore, um, it's sort of a bit of a, a solitary, um, I guess, endeavour. You know, it really is. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, it's a very solitary thing. So it's good to get out and it's good to engage with people like yourself and go and speak at those events and, and what have you. But that's where I find myself now. You know, I've got my book, um, you know, Trading in a Nutshell, and it's fourth edition. I have my blog where I just post little bits and pieces when I sort of see fit and uh, that's where I find myself now. Right, thanks for the background there Stuart. So you mentioned you had to overcome some obstacles. I thought trading was supposed to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> trading is uh, its not easy at all. It's really uh, quite difficult. Um, it is challenging. It, it is difficult. It is by, no, by any stretch uh, easy. Um, there's a, a wonderful phrase that I love and uh, Curtis Faith, The Way of the Turtle, from the book, where he said, um, trading is simple, but it's not easy. And there's a massive difference between simplicity and ease. Um, trading is by no means easy. It is quite difficult. I think that's uh, one of the major problems. Um, there's no obvious pathway. There's no barrier to entry. Um, there's no obvious pathway to become a trader. Um, if, you know, during school I wanted to go off and be a lawyer or be an accountant or be a doctor or something like that, there was an obvious pathway. I knew what I had to do. I had to achieve a certain, you know, grades at school and then I'd go off and do X number of years at university of, you know, X, Y, Z. There's no obvious pathway to be a trader. And I think, um, because of that, we think, well, if anybody can do it, anybody can do it. You know, it can't be that difficult. So there's a long, sort of a long-winded answer. Yeah. Trading is by no means easy. Um, I think it's been to my detriment over the course of the journey because I have said that just point blank to so many people. Um, I vividly remember, um, I think I changed someone's life. I'd like to think I did. I was speaking at uh, the Traders Expo in Las Vegas. This is back in 2012. And I said just that. I said, if anybody's told you previously that trading is easy, they, they've done you an incredible disservice. Like they've really d uh, haven't done you any favours at all. Um, and I had a guy come up to you. I, I still picture him. He came up to me afterwards and said, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Because it was sort of along the lines of here I am thinking that what am I doing wrong? You know, um, why am I achieving what I want to set out to achieve? And I think from that, you could just see it in his face. It was like had some closure. It was like, well, maybe this isn't for me. But now I feel a bit more comfortable making that decision as opposed to I'm just a dead set failure. Um, this was an incredibly difficult endeavor I've uh, undertaken and it just hasn't worked for me. And there's no shame in that. Yeah. Uh, it's so, certainly not easy at all. Yeah. So you've actually worked with a lot of traders. Uh, mm. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see traders make? Yeah, I, I get, there's a lot of them, I guess. Um, I don't know if you, someone you know, smarter than me could bundle them up into different sort of categories. But, um, you know, certainly having a plan and just thinking we can just go in and make decisions. And I was like that, you know, I'm, I'm, I was like everybody else. Uh, I went in, just made random decisions and bought this and sold that and bought that, some of them. And I bought more of those because I felt, you know, really confident about that opportunity. And just having no process and no methodology and no plan is a big one. Mm. Um, probably similar to what I've just sort of been alluding to there is the expectations. Um, it's easy to be sold and easy to be sold on the expectations out of trading is, you know, you can have your own private island within four weeks or you'll be, you know, the pictures of you sitting there with your laptop or your tablet, you know, on your lap as you're sitting on the beach and, the, you know, water sort of lapping up against your legs and you know, all that sort of stuff. Here I am, you know, selling a euro and buying some gold and, oh, my heavens. I mean, is that a dream or what? <laughs> so you can be sold on that, you know. Yeah. So expectations, I think, is a big one. Um, and not having realistic expectations, you know. I think that's a, mazy, a massive problem, certainly emotional, uh, taking it too emotionally. But that's all just experience. When you have no experience, it's too easy. We're only human. It's too easy to be emotionally involved in what you're doing. And then when you've got money involved, you know, money grabs at us in – ways that probably not many other things can mm. and affects our emotions. Uh, tolerance to risk. People don't understand the risks 
they are taking if they open up a position in something. Uh, there is there is a risk uh, attached to that. Now, they don't understand that risk. They don't uh, manage that risk. And now it's too easy to trade a leveraged product. You know, when I started, it wasn't that easy to trade a leveraged product. Now it is. It's too easy. You can trade currencies at 100 to 1 or or certainly beyond that if you wish. You can trade CFDs at 100, you know, 100 to 1. And so there's a lot of leverage. And, of course, that's just – that's risk and that's increasing the risk. So people not understanding the risk, uh, certainly trading things well beyond their tolerance to risk. And probably also along the lines of the, um, you know, is it easy or difficult? Um, the fact that I've sort of stated my case that I think it is actually quite difficult. People just not spending the time to learn what they need to learn um, to actually become quite good at this. And it takes a long time. And you just don't go to a weekend course, regardless of the price tag, and come out on Sunday evening being a really, really good trader. Um, that just doesn't happen. You, you probably tend 10 in a row and you still wouldn't be there. Mm. Um, it really does take a lot more time than anybody realises. So just to sort of sum that all up, trading is a lot more difficult than you think when you start and it's going to take a huge amount of time and a lot more time than you probably anticipate or could ever dream that it would take um, to be in a position where you can have some confidence and sort of consistently make some money. Thanks, Stuart. So what issues or considerations do traders need to make uh, when first trying to find a trading style that suits them? We all have a different tolerance to risk. Some people are very happy taking on a lot of risk, taking on a lot of trades at once, trading very actively, doing a lot of things uh, you know, in and out very actively. Others are not comfortable with that, and that's perfectly fine. That's who they are. And you can't do a lot of changing in your risk tolerance. That's one big issue. Uh, the other one is simply time. Some trading styles demand a lot of your time to implement them correctly. Um, so people, you know, um, sometimes people want to trade very, very short term, but just simply don't have the time to do it. Um, and it's not because they're not mentally capable or that's not within them or they don't have the tolerance to risk. They just don't have the time to do it. So sometimes people who are very, very busy with other things are probably better suited to actually trading a little bit more longer term, not long term, but certainly more longer term than um, some other people, simply because they just don't have as much time to commit to that. But it's a very, you know, you can't, you know, I do a lot of presentations and I can't look anybody in the eye and go, this is your risk tolerance. You know, a scale of one to 10, you're a four. And the guy next to you, he's a three. You can't tell that to someone. Uh, you can't determine that. I think it's very much a, uh, it's really a, a gut feel. It's what you feel comfortable trading or not trading. Um, yeah, but it's a long process, you know, determining what's right for us. But eventually, you know, we all travel on the same path and eventually some people get to that point where they go, I'm never going to trade that again. I wasn't comfortable doing it. I didn't like it. Well, okay, that's the correct answer for you. If you're not comfortable with it, then you shouldn't be trading it. It's not right for you. So what are some of the common money management mistakes you see traders making? Well, the first one is not setting stops. Uh, eventually people convince themselves, okay, I need to set stops, but then they set them way too close because intuitively they think, um, well, the further away I set my stop, the more money I'm going to lose. Your position sizing should ensure that doesn't happen, but that's what people think. Um, if they don't know any better, that's obvious. If I set my stop miles away, wow, I'm going to lose a lot more money. Oh, clearly, if we're trading a sort of fixed, um, fixed amount, um, but your position sizing should determine that if your stop's further away and it's there for the right reason, you just don't have as much exposure. You don't take as large a trade. That's what good position sizing um, is all about. Um, you know, choosing between whether we set profit targets or trailing exits and where, you know, we pick one over the other, depending on the product we trade and whether we have a balance between both of those. But certainly a lot of the errors relate to the initial stops and getting out and you know, we almost have no excuse now where so many trading platforms have conditional orders where before you even click submit to open the trade, you actually set up the whole trade. You can set up everything. Mm. You can set up the take profit, the trailing stop and the stop loss, go away and never, you know, never even touch it again. And the whole trade's taken care of. So, you know, it wasn't only a few years ago that you couldn't do any of that. So we actually have less excuses now to, to not follow these rules and, and manage risk well. But anyway, a lot of us still find a way to, to not manage risk well. Um, but it's certainly been made easier for us. Mm. Okay, if we can just move on to mindset, I'd like to ask about a quote you made in your book, Trading in a Nutshell. Uh -oh. The quote was, 
Your mindset is the single biggest factor in your trading success. There are so many factors that go into trading. Why do you say mindset is the biggest? Because we're the ones that has to actually execute. Um, we're the one that actually has to make the decision. Um, so as I've sort of been getting at, we can make all the great rules, but we're the ones that still need to execute that. One of my favorite quotes is, uh, trading is simple, but it's not easy. So all the things we have to do, really straightforward. I mean, I can explain to my children the whole idea that if you buy this and it falls down to this price, we need to get out. And they all doing math at school. They could understand all that. But whether they could actually do it in the heat of the moment with money at, on the line, that's the question. Not that I want to throw my children into the fire of trading just yet, but you see where I'm getting at. It's yeah. us that actually has to execute it. So, you know, again, with quotes, um, and you mentioned my book, um, so I'm comfortable to bring it up again. But in the fourth edition, um, I, I developed a new chapter on market wizards. I basically got my own little market wizards group and interviewed them. And Dr. Van Thart was one of them. And one of the questions I asked was back in his book in 99, Trade Your Way to Financial Freedom, he had a pie chart, three ingredients to success. And they were basically the three M's, so the methodology or system, money management and the psychology. And I said, and he said, psychology was uh, 60% of your success. And I, um, I said, oh, do you still believe that? You know, we're 15 years later now. Do you still believe that psychology is 60% of your success? And he gave a really long-winded answer. But then he said, no, I, it's 100%. I mean, psychology is everything. He said, you have to do it. You're the one that has to carry out the task. Um, I'm going, whoa, I mean, you know, he changes tune. Um, and I've had, heard other people say that, that, you know, managing risk is really, really important. It's the most important decisions you make are related to managing risk, but you're the one that actually has to do it. So that's what it all boils down to you being the weakest link and, you know, the mindset is single most critical component. So what do you think is one of the, uh, the biggest issues regarding mindset for traders? Discipline is probably the biggest. Uh, emotion, emotional attachment, involvement, uh, emotion overriding sort of logic and overriding process and rules that we have in place. But discipline to me is clearly the number one. It's it's the thing that also controls some of the other attributes that I talk about. Uh, but discipline, uh, emotion is, excuse me, a, is a big deal. Even in the early stages, a lack of confidence. Uh, confidence is critical and it's really difficult to get confidence early on when you're losing money and have no idea what you're doing and it's really difficult to get confidence, yet it's so, so important to stay committed and, and want to persist and keep going to, to maintain that passion and enthusiasm. That's difficult um, because you start out with all these dreams and hopes and no, I'm going to quit work next week and, you know, I'll be sitting on a beach and take my children on holidays all the time. All these visions we create for ourselves. And then after a few losses, we go, wow, smack in the head. This is not as easy as I thought. Uh, it's really difficult to maintain that enthusiasm and passion and and what have you. And, and we could keep going. You know, there's so many attributes and things in the psychology component, but I'll come mm. back to it. I think discipline is uh, incredibly, you know, it's just paramount. And emotions, um, not often talked about, but that's also uh, a critical component as well. If we can just talk a little bit more about discipline, what, what mm. aspects of trading are you saying apply to discipline? Well, it's all decision-making, mm. I think. Um as again, just to bring up another quote, if I may, I'm probably sure. going to butcher this quote, but um, <laughs> the commander of the Allied forces in the first Gulf War was General Norman Schwarzkopf, yep. Storm and Norman. And he said, the truth of the matter is you always know the right thing to do. The hard part is doing it. And he was talking about leadership and in a military context, but I think that's very relevant to trading. The truth of the matter is you always know the right thing to do. The hard part is doing it. We know that we always need to cut our losing trades. We know that, but it's actually hard to do it. And then all these, we think of all sorts of reasons not to do it. So that's the discipline. That's the, you know, we're often faced with two courses of action. One, what we feel like doing. And number two, what our trading plan says we should be doing. Now, it's easy to do what we feel like doing. That's the easy choice. Or I forget about what we feel like doing. That's not important. What our trading plan says we should be doing is everything. And it's really important. And that's discipline. Because discipline is all about self-control. Uh, that's all it is. Um, whether you want to do something or not, you just do it because you know it's the right thing to do. That's discipline as far as I'm concerned. And it helps with the other things. You know, how can we be committed and remain motivated and passionate if we don't have a little bit of self-control? 
we control that because we're down in the dumps and we've lost money and we need to front up to our wife or our husband, you know, that we've just lost a bit of money. Mm-hmm. That's hard to do. I've done it. Um, unfortunately, I've done it with some large sums of money. That's really difficult to do. Um, so to maintain that enthusiasm afterwards, when you have none, you know, that takes a bit of self-control to say, no, no, forget it. I'm going to just get on with this and push on, even though I really don't want to. Um, I want to, you know, get somewhere with this and achieve what I set out to achieve. That, that to me is a bit of discipline in that. So it's all about following rules. To me, trading is a rules-based activity. If you want to do it well, it's very much a rules-based activity. And often we require a bit of discipline to stick to the rules. Right. So if a trader is having issues with discipline, how can they address those? It's a great question and one I'm asked very, very often. And I think the, unfortunately, I'm going to probably give a long answer to this, but (laughs) I'll try to keep it short. I think it's like setting New Year's resolutions of, you know, one Jan's coming up. It's some superficial date that all of a sudden I'll just change my life and I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to do this and I'm going to exercise, blah, blah, blah. And then by 15 Jan, it's all out the window, right? Because people were really never committed to making that change. We're very habitual creatures. We do what, you know, just habit. You know, you walk in the door of your home, you probably do the same first three things all the time. Take your shoes off or put your keys there or put your wallet there or take your watch off, whatever it might be. They're habitual. You don't even think about doing them. Well, we're very habitual creatures. We like to do the same things. So in trading, we actually have to sort of unlearn behaviors and retrain ourselves to do different things. So if, you, if someone said to me, right, um, well, let me come back to an analogy of the exercise. If you said, right, uh, you know, the ne- start of the next, first of the next month, we're going to start walking five days a week because we know we should be doing that for exercise. And of course we should be doing that. But for someone who hasn't done that, to then all of a sudden five days a week walk for 30 minutes is incredibly difficult to make that change. Um, and by, you know, on the, and the first day, if you had a group of 100 people, the first day, everybody would go out for that walk for 30 minutes. The second day, vast majority would. By the end of that week, there'd already be a drop off where people just wouldn't have gone. By the end of that month, imagine what percentage would be down to, right? It wouldn't be even 50%. Well, the same with changing behavior in trading. If you give people a relief or an outlet at the end, it's much more easier to change that behavior. For example, you said to that group of 100 people, right, next week we're going to walk three days a week, just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But Thursday and Friday, Saturday, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to walk. Most people would stick through that three days. And then the following week, you do it another three days. The following week, you do it four days in a row. You slowly but surely change that behavior to the point where that new behavior becomes the habit. It's the thing that we normally do. So I think the same with trading is, you you know, I'm coaching someone, I'll say, okay, the next two trades only, you will set a stop and you will stick to that stop. Almost any trader could do that because I've only said the next two trades, that's it. After that, you can do whatever you want. So it's just the next two trades and they could all do that. But if I said, no, no, and if every, every trade from now on, it's, whoa, hang on a second, that's just, that's all too much and, and it's difficult to, to change. But if you give someone just slow steps or small steps slowly, we can slowly change behavior. Whew, there you go. That's my sort of response to, to be, you know, just becoming a little bit more disciplined and changing our behavior. Right, that's great. So we don't need to make a lot of uh, large changes uh, straight away, just a continuous improvement. Yeah, so I saw a, yeah, I saw a coaching client, um, in fact, just uh, 2012 in Los Angeles. And this guy would have taken more trades in one day than I take in five years. The amount of activity in a you know 10-hour day was just ridiculous. Now, how's he going to change behavior when he just trades so actively? And I remember at the time, because it was Thanksgiving coming up in the US, so everyone you know, takes three or four days off, and I said, right, you know what? You should stop this for a week. Just stop. Provide yourself a circuit breaker. Stop doing this. Have a good think about what you're doing, and then start to implement that change next week. Because if, if I said to him, oh, yeah, you should move your stop out by five pips or something like that, this guy trades so often, he's not going to make that change because mm. he just does it so much. Uh, there's so much activity. So... Sometimes, yeah, we need to provide a break, a circuit break in his case, and it was good timing, I thought, in his particular case. But I think it's small steps over time because it does not happen overnight. Yeah, that's great advice. Thanks, Stuart. Um, another one that you mentioned uh, very early on in the, um, the interview was expectations. The traders uh, seem to think that trading is going to be easy when they begin. Mm. And um, 
they usually find out that it's uh, not so easy. How can mm. traders manage expectations? Yeah, well, sadly, I think in the commercial world of people trying to sell things to help traders, there can be a lot of false expectations generated from that. It's the, oh, this will take you 10 minutes a day and, you know, and, and here's how much money you can make. And, and you see advertisements still to this day, maybe not so much in Australia, but probably elsewhere. Although I'm sure you see it occasionally as, you know, I made X hundreds of dollars this morning before I even had my bowl of Weepix, you know, and I was still in my pyjamas. You know, as if people don't want to, that to be them. I mean, as if you wouldn't want to do that. That's out. That's fantastic. What a life that is. Um, so I think there can be a lot of false expectations just simply generated, not from within, but simply what's presented to people. And you see some glossy brochure or really slick presentation of, oh, you just got to press buy here and, and put in X number of units and then, you know, get to your phone and then press the sell order on your phone. And we go, whoa, I can do that. And I was the same. I, I fell into this trap. I thought to myself, how difficult can this be? All you've got to do is buy and sell. That's it. Well, it can't be that difficult. Um, so I don't know. It's just, uh, I guess, if enough people tell people right from the outset, and it's probably not a lot of people's commercial interest because you'll have less people buying books and buying software and buying courses that if you were just up front with them and say, you know what, trading is not as easy as you probably think. And there's a really good chance you're not going to make any money. Imagine telling that, that to people up front when they're when it clearly sabotages their own interests, of commercial interests of trying to sell you something. Um, so I don't know. It's difficult to get that message across, I think. Yeah, right. Um, there's a great story in your book actually about the um, the Petronas Twin Towers in Malaysia. Can you can you share yes. that with us? Sure. I think it's about the foundations. Is that right? Yeah, that's the one. So, yeah, I've been very lucky uh, even over the last 10 years now to travel all around the world, a lot through Southeast Asia and the like, but I just remember going to KL uh, back quite a number of years ago and seeing those twin towers. I thought these are just magnificent buildings. You know, the fact that there's two of them and going across the sky bridge, I think on the 44th floor or something like that, it was just really magnificent. And that whole area and complex is really, really nice. But um, it got me reading about this and thought, oh, where does this rank in the world's tallest buildings? And you know, how big are the other ones? And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And <laughs> excuse me, um, it got me reading on the facts that you know it's. 500 meters tall or something maybe a little bit shy of that but then a third of its a third of its height is actually under the ground and I, that just struck me i was just fascinated i think i'm fascinating a little bit by engineering and you know the fact that a big aircraft can get off the ground and stay off the ground 15 hours fascinates me and the fact that they can build such tall buildings but then have so much of it into the earth surf into the earth staggers me so it's the idea of that you know the most important part of that building is not seen it's not obvious it's not seen. It's never talked about. And the most important part, of course, is the foundations, the thing that's stopping it toppling over and falling into other buildings. So we can think of trading in a similar way where maybe we can think about how do we set ourselves up well for success and how do we prepare ourselves to grow and to become good traders. And they're things that you sort of don't really uh, think about, excuse me, or not really consciously aware of. You certainly don't talk about them. They're boring topics. Um, so you don't often hear a lot of people about talking about, you know, the sort of foundations that I come up with. And I just thought it was, you know, I wasn't presented those foundations. I just got thinking one day, what, what could be a list of foundations that traders could think about that could better prepare themselves to have a decent crack at this? Do you want to share what some of those are? Yeah, I'm just going to think now. You're putting me on the spot. I hope they're in my book. Uh, certainly the right attitude was definitely one of them. Just having the right positive attitude uh, to this. Um, I think about setting realistic expectations was one of them, um, about spending your time wisely um, because I think a lot of people, again, think it's not going to be that difficult and therefore don't really give it the sort of effort that it's, uh, that's really required. Um, set some goals. And just making money is not a very – I mean, it's a goal, but it's probably not a good one. Uh, I think it needed to be a little bit more specific than that. Mm. but actually aiming towards something. Um, I say to people, you know, often say in seminars, I say, right, here's today's date, right? Let's add, 50, let's add sorry, one year to today's date. What do, you, what do you want your trading to look like in 12 months' time? If you're standing at your office door looking in on yourself, what are you looking at? What do you see? What's on the screen? How, how do you picture your trading? That gives you all of a sudden a very powerful image of what you're trying to, to aim towards and, uh, you know, go towards. 
Um, because if we don't have that sort of vision of what we're trying to work towards, you know, sort of wandering aimlessly and just drifting and really not heading in any particular direction, hoping that something just catches and opens a door for us or a light comes on and we just go to this course and then we'll go to this one. That's free. I'll go along to that one. Uh, that's a good book. I heard good things. I'll pick that up. And sure enough, we're picking up pieces along the way, but unfortunately it's not probably, we're not getting it as quickly um, and as effectively as we'd probably like. So having that sort of vision of what we're trying to aim towards. And again, that's not easy because you don't really perhaps have an idea of what sort of trader you really want to be. And you perhaps along the journey, you eventually start to work some of those things out. Yeah, that's a great story. Thanks for sharing that. I think you're right that a lot of trading is not really about getting those foundations down. So I think it's good to have a think about uh, where your trading is and how those foundations could be impacting uh, your results. Yeah, and I think the I think I, I don't know if this is in the book. It's certainly in presentations I give the idea of the Chinese bamboo plant, which is a I can't remember if this is actually in the book, but I certainly talk about it being the fastest growing plant in the world. But when you first plant one, it actually doesn't grow. Like for the first three or four years, nothing happens, or so it seems. What it's actually doing is growing its foundations and its root system underground. It does this for years. And then once that's ready, then its growth is just ridiculous. Um, so it's actually doing a very, very important role of establishing those foundations. Um, and if it didn't do that, then it might topple over. It may not grow as quickly. And sure, it'd grow, but not the, the rate that it actually eventually does grow. And it all comes down to sometimes sacrificing things over the short term in the pursuit of longer term objectives. Um, and we can, as humans, are very easily focused on short term and not so focused on longer term. Right. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. That's great. So I think we'll uh, wrap this up now with some um, closing questions. Okay. First one, what's the biggest lesson you've learned through trading? Oh, geez. <laughs> um, that I really don't know a lot. Um, I have no control over what's going on in the market. Um, what I think doesn't really matter for much or care for much. Um, you can very easily make mistakes. So I'm not giving you the biggest one here. I'm just sort of rattling some off my head. Um, that one, tr sorry, that one trade can completely undo the 19 really good ones before it. That's been a, a, a difficult lesson for me. It's almost unfair. You you really start to do things well and not not making all the profits, but just sorry, not all trades are the, are profitable. You lose some along the way, but you're doing things really really well, and then one trade just blows it all up. One trade, it's like mm. unfair. You think you'd have to have ten trades to undo all that good work, but um, just one trade can undo it all. That that that's a really big lesson that hurts. Um, the big lesson maybe is that it's not as easy as you think. A big lesson is basically everything we have to do is counterintuitive. Um, and when you're starting out, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, and most of the things, if you do a lot of things intuitively, instinctively, you'll probably make a very, a lot of very bad uh, trading decisions. So that's probably, probably a very, very big lesson is a lot of things you have to do are counterintuitive and don't make any sense. Can you give us some examples of that? Yeah, well, certainly cutting a loss is probably the classic example. Uh, the whole aim of trading is to make money. That's why people get into it. I'm not, not saying it's your most important aim, or sure it should be, but it is a very important motivator for people to get into this. And the whole idea of cutting a losing trade and realizing that loss and denying yourself the opportunity to break even in that trade makes no sense whatsoever. Why would you cut that loss and deny yourself the opportunity of getting that money back in that trade and price returning to entry. Makes no sense. Why would you crystallize the loss when all you're trying to do is make money? That's probably one example. The whole idea of if you have a series of losing trades, uh, the right risk management rules say that you sort of reduce trade size. You sort of just wind back a little bit. Now, that's counterintuitive to do that because you become desperate and think, well, I really need to make this money back and you start to risk more and put more money into trades. It's counterintuitive to say, no, well, you need to actually reduce the size of your trades. That's counterintuitive. Um, that there's just a couple I can think of. Uh, one, probably another obvious one is following trends. Um, why would you buy something when it's going up? Right? Everything with our shopping, the whole our sort of whole thought process is um, if it's going down and going down and going down, that's a bargain. I'm going to buy it. Whereas I never buy shares that are going down, ever. I buy them going up, but that makes no sense. Why would you buy something when it's going up? Well, because I want to buy it high and then sell it higher. But that's counterintuitive. I don't think that makes a lot of sense to people. Mm. 
anyways, a few examples. Oh, great, thank you. Um, what's the best trading advice you've ever received? Uh, maybe aim for constant gradual improvement. Um, you're not going to kick any goals and home runs or whatever analogy you want to use uh, overnight. Um, that it is actually just a very long journey that if you keep at it and do the right things, eventually it might come together. Um, best piece of advice, yeah, probably along those lines, just a, just constant gradual improvement, just constantly work towards uh, getting better. Uh, yeah, that's probably one that I can think of now. Okay, thanks. Uh, Favourite trading book? Well, uh, there's one by John Wiley called Trading in a Nutshell. For- no, that's my book. I thought, <laughs> sorry, you don't mind me plugging that. Uh, no, no. Favourite book clearly is, uh, obviously for me, is Market Wizards by Jack Schwager. Yeah, that's a classic. It's by far my best trading book and probably had the single greatest influence uh, from an educational perspective um, on my on my trading. And what's the best way for listeners to get in touch with you? Uh, just my website. Uh, it's just my name, .com, stuartmcfee.com, where I just run a blog and have a lot of uh, educational videos uh, in my academy there and always trying to co- post content on what I think is important for people. So stuartmcfee.com would be the best place. Okay, great. So thanks so much for sharing your knowledge and experience with us today. Is there anything else you'd like to mention before we wrap up? No, no, I think uh, I think we've had a good session, answered a few good questions there. Excellent. So I, I highly recommend everyone check out Stuart's website. So they can contain loads of information on trading and trading plans. I'll add those websites into the show notes so you can find them easily. Thanks for your time today, Stuart. Hey, you're very welcome. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Stuart, for the chat this week. I really enjoyed the two analogies he provided talking about foundations and how they applied to trading. The first one was the towers in Malaysia, the tallest twin towers in the world. I took a look at the stats on the foundations and at some parts they had to add concrete piles 114 metres deep, or 374 feet. That's huge. The most important part of that building, the part that anchors it and keeps it from falling over, is not even visible. Is our trading based on solid foundations like the Petronas Towers? The second analogy was the Chinese bamboo story. When you plant the seed, nothing seems to happen for one, two, three, four years. Then in the fifth year, it sprouts and grows 90 feet in six weeks. It takes time to establish those foundations, but once it's set, it really takes off. Trading can be similar to the growing process of the Chinese bamboo tree. It can often appear that no progress is being made. You know, we're doing the right things, but the results aren't coming. But for those who do the right things, are patient and persistent, the results can appear. So that's two great stories there. Thanks for sharing them, Stuart. If you want to get more information about this episode, head over to the show notes, bettersystemtrader.com slash 15. We have links to additional content if you'd like to know more about Stuart's work. We've got some great guests coming up in the following weeks too, including Jerry Parker, the most successful trader from the Turtle Trading Program, and Andrea Unger the only trader to win the World Cup Trading Championship three times in a row. Look out for those and other huge episodes in the following weeks. Anyway, that's it for this session. I hope you enjoyed the chat with Stuart. Uh, Thanks for listening to The Better System Trader. Catch you next week. Thanks for listening to The Better System Trader podcast. The next step is to head over to bettersystemtrader.com for more expert tips, practical advice, and exclusive content. Catch us next time for even more great ways to improve your trading here on Better System Trader.